Thank you for joining us online. At Mission Gathering, we welcome all to Christ's table. If you are Asian, Hispanic, Black, or White, if you are male or female, trans or non-binary, if you are three days old, 30 years old, or 103 years old, if you've never stepped foot in a church, or if you are Buddhist, Roman Catholic, agnostic, or a lifelong evangelical, if you are single, married, divorced, separated, or partnered, if you are straight, gay, lesbian, or bisexual, if you are a Republican, a Democrat, an Independent, a Socialist, or not registered to vote, if you have or have had addictions, phobias, abortions, or a criminal record, if you own your own home or rent, live with your parents, or are homeless, if you are fully able, disabled, or a person of differing abilities, you are welcome here. Some ways to participate at home, feel free. Feel free to sing the songs um, or to take communion. If you don't have any bread or wine, that's okay. Use what you have. All the world is full of God's glory and anything can become holy elements through the power and mystery of the Holy Spirit. So welcome. We're glad that you're joining us. Hey, Mission Gathering, real quick, Pastor Andrew here. Um, so our day of supporting jail support has moved. Now it's moved, instead of on, a, on this Sunday, it's going to be next Saturday. It's gonna be next Saturday at Marshall Park. And if, as I get more and more details, I will give them to you. But again, jail support is a group that is showing love to all of those people going through the criminal justice system and who have spent time at the Mecklenburg County Jail for any number of reasons and they show them love through giving them food, giving them clothing, giving them cell phones that they can call somebody to come get them, or even arranging rides for them as, as they leave the jail system to go back home and try and rebuild their lives. So I'll get you those details as we get them on that same day. Here at Mission Gathering Charlotte, we are having a breathwork ceremony. A breathwork ceremony is when we use the tool of our breath to connect with our emotions inside of our bodies, to release traumas and anxieties and other things that have happened. And if you're like me, this uh, coming week is going to be filled with, with a little bit of anxiety. So here's just one more way that we can learn to use the tools God has given us to be as healthy and as happy as we can be in our lives. So please join us. If, if you go to our Queen City MGRs page, there is an event link where you can click on the Eventbrite and get tickets. The tickets are free. There's a $12 suggested donation, but if you don't have that, that's okay. We just want you to come and be able to learn this technique and this tool to create a more whole and healthy life for you and those around you. All right, let's get to it. Hey everybody, with our new rule of life, we have a new welcome statement. And I'm gonna read through it this week, but I would love, 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 if I could get some of you to commit to reading it with me and, and letting us film you reading it, or you can film yourself in a safe and socially distanced way. But I think that 
The world needs to see our welcome and they need to see your faces while we do it. So this week it's going to be me and next week I hope that it's not going to be me because I know who you are, Mission Gathering. I know the kind of welcome that you bring to people. And so here's our new statement. At Mission Gathering, we are a community committed to following Jesus with our whole lives. We follow so we may join Christ in the creation of a more beautiful life and world. We exist as a community where absolutely everyone is not only welcomed, but embraced. No matter who you love, where you are from, what you believe, how you vote, you are embraced here. We are an unashamedly Christian, progressive, and inclusive church. We seek to be a place of healing for the hurting and recovery for the afflicted and justice for the oppressed. We are a community committed to a pattern of living we call our rule of life. We commit to live together as a community, to live simply in our daily lives, to live aware of God's presence, to live engaged in the healing of our world. Together in our diversity, we are the hands and feet of Christ to one another and to all of creation. God has brought us together and is working within us to grow in faith, hope, and love. Let us live bravely and courageously into this calling today. As we welcome the Holy Spirit and the light of Christ among us, may it be so. Amen.
At Mission Gathering, one of our, our core principles for our rule of life is to live simply. We do this so that we can resist the culture of greed and use our resources to support both our ability to gather and grow in awareness of God's work in our lives, and we use our resources to support the work of God's mission of the healing of the world around us. Our goal in this phase of rebuilding is to grow our giving so that what we take in can be equal to what we give back out through our nonprofit partners and through direct aid and community support. So whether you give $5 a week or $500 a week, I just wanna say thank you. I wanna say thank you for your commitment to working on living more simply and to resisting that culture of grief. This step of giving can be one that can be transformative in our daily lives, teaching us to be generous, generous of our time, of our talents, and of our treasure, treasures. As we seek to create an essential community here in the heart of Charlotte, North Carolina, one of those biggest steps is giving. So below on the screen, there are links of where you can give and how you can give. If you can't give, that's okay. No one's gonna judge you if you can't give right now. But if you can give, why not? Why not take this moment to support what God is doing here and the amazing things that are coming to the city of Charlotte and this community because of people like you who choose to give. From the bottom of my heart, I say thank you and I ask that the Lord bless these gifts. Amen. So we're on our final rule of our rule of life series. And it seems like everything else in 2020 that we started this months ago, but it's really only been the past three weeks. And so far we've talked about living together, living simply and living aware. And this week it's all about living engaged. But today's also a really special day in the Christian church calendar. It's known as All Saints Day or All Souls Day to some people. It's when we remember and honor the ancestors of our faith, all of those people who've come before us, all of those people that laid the groundwork for so many sweeping changes that happened all throughout history. It's also when we recognize that some of those things weren't the best. But in all of it, in the good and the bad, we give thanks for the gift of the faith that's been passed down to us through all of those generations. These were the mothers and fathers whose wisdom has sustained us through these times of COVID-19 and crazy elections. But it's also when we remember Jesus' Sermon on the Mount in this one section of the Sermon on the Mount called the Beatitudes. And the Beatitudes are blessings. It's Jesus telling people who may not be happy how they can be happy. So let's read it. Happy are the people who are hopeless because the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Happy are people who grieve because they will be made glad. Happy are people who are humble because they will inherit the earth. Happy are people who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness because they will be fed until they are full. Happy are people who show mercy because they shall receive mercy. Happy are people who have pure hearts because they will see God. Happy are people who make peace because they will be called God's children. Happy are people whose lives are harassed because they are righteous, because the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Happy are you when people insult you and harass you and speak all kinds of bad and false things about you, all because of me. Be full of joy and be glad because you have a great reward in heaven in the same way people harass the prophets who came before you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
So these statements, right? They don't seem to make sense. How can hopeless people be happy? How can those in grief be happy? Each of these statements seems so countercultural to our American ideals of where happiness comes from. And they are. Like, they should seem countercultural to us because Jesus was bringing a new awareness to a new family who had no choice but to live simply as the weight of the empire, the Roman Empire, crushed them down. Jesus is calling them to an engagement that recognizes where they are with an awareness that God is there with them. Think about that. Jesus is calling them to be aware that God is with them so that they can engage the things that are going on around them. Think about all that's going on around us here during COVID, right? COVID cases are starting to spike again. Our president continually uplifts values that go against everything that Jesus says and everything that Jesus specifically says here. So our natural reaction to all of this stuff, our natural reaction to hope, despair, to, to all of this persecution, to all of the things that are going on in our society, our natural reaction would normally be to disengage from the world. I mean, we've all made those jokes, right? Let's just all buy campers and go find some place to live in the mountains. Maybe we find a cabin or, or set up a farmstead somewhere and just like live communally away from all of this mess. And you know, honestly, no one would blame us for doing that. But Jesus, Jesus wants to call us to something else. Jesus wants to call us to stay engaged, to stay engaged with our grief, with all of the stress and all of the struggle that we go through to keep engaged with those things. Because that is what we have to do to be, become a child of God, to be called a child of God. So we have to keep engaging the world in these tough moments. Because that's what it is to be called into being a part of God's family, right? I don't know how your family was, but my family you know, sometimes we had hard times and it could have been really easy to just go our separate ways, but we stayed engaged and we did work to help each other be happier and healthier in our lives. And in a bigger way, staying engaged in this moment, living out this Sermon on the Mount, it means being here now, right? It means letting God be here with us now. We have a really hard time as humans because we can dwell on the past and we can imagine a future that's not here yet but being here right now and everything that we're feeling and all of the anxiety and the worry and the fear and the grief all of these things being here now and allowing God to be here with us now is how we stay engaged in the work of kingdom building because Mission Gathering, we don't simply struggle against political parties or systems of government. When we stay engaged, when we stay in this moment, when we're here now, and we allow God to be here with us now, we are fighting against the powers and principalities of evil and negativity themselves. We're standing up to the meta narrative versus just the cultural one. We're standing up with all of the cloud of witnesses, all of the saints that came before us to say, you know what? God hasn't given up yet and we're not giving up either. So how do we act when we stay engaged? Well, you see the prophet Micah who lived like hundreds of years before Jesus had this to say, God has told you human one, what is good and what the Lord requires from you to do justice embrace faithful love, and walk humbly with your God. So that's a really powerful verse. And if you, if you hang out with Pastor Rich McCullough, he's got, he's got it tattooed on his wrist and everything. And, and it's, a, it's one that maybe some of you have tattooed on you or you have on a wall somewhere. But how do we live all of that out? How do we do justice? How do we embrace faithful love? How do we stay humble in all of it? Well, you see, the Bible is a great place to go because there's answers to so many things all over it. Like it's not a tool to beat you down. It's the stories of all those saints that went before us to lift us up and say, you know what, they struggled too. But Jesus, Jesus wanted to speak to his, his friends one last time in Matthew, right? Like 
so we, we read the Sermon on the Mount stuff, the Beatitudes from Matthew, and this is towards the end of Matthew's Gospel in Matthew 25. And this is what God's measuring stick would be. This is what Jesus' measuring stick would be to how we live out that, that passage from Micah, how we live out staying engaged in our society. Jesus told this story. The king, then the king will say to those on, the, on his right, come you who will receive good things from my father, inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you before the world began. I was hungry and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothes to wear. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then those who are righteous will reply to him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you as a stranger and welcome you, or naked and give you clothes to wear? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And then the king will reply to them, I assure you that when you have done it for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you have done it for me. Living engaged in the life of the kingdom of Jesus Christ has been the same from the time of the ancestors to today's struggling moments that seem like they keep going on forever and ever. We see need when we see need, when we see those who are pushed to the margins, when we see those who are left out, we respond by meeting those needs and uplifting their voices. Because that mission gathering, that is what this great cloud of witnesses calls us to, because it's what they did. And, and I wasn't planning on saying any of this, I know I sound like rich there, but I wasn't planning on saying any of this, but you know how empires crumble? It's when we meet the needs of the least all around us. So yes, there is a lot of work we have to do, and there's a lot of structural things that we have to do. But when you do for the least of these, you are creating the kingdom here and now, and not simply waiting for a reward after this life. Because this life, and all of its struggles, and all of its anxieties, and all of the dangers, and all of the, the horribleness that we see across our newsfeed day after day after day, all of those pushes to disengage from the world is an invitation to still embrace that this life is the gift. The good and the bad parts of life are a part of the gift. Not because God wants bad things to happen, but because God invites us to engage this world, to make good come out of bad, to be people who make better decisions and keep pushing that line of justice and progress forward until that arc bends so hard that the yoke of oppression is snapped. So Mission Gathering, may you be here now. May you allow God to be present with you now. May you be here in this moment with all of your grief and all of your worry and all of your fear. And may you stay engaged. May you choose to take this gift of life and stay engaged in doing the hard work of making peace, true peace, gospel peace, not just tranquility, not just pacifying people enough so that they don't complain in front of us, but making true peace, true peace that will ring out and show people what it means to follow Jesus. May you stay engaged in that hard work. May you be a good and faithful servant of the one who being God did not consider a quality God as being something to cling to, but humbled himself, taking on the same form that we have, who humbled himself so much that he became a marginalized person among his own people. May you be that good and faithful servant who chooses the hard road of reconciling all the world to God and a servant who refuses to play the games of the powers and principalities of this world on their own terms. Don't play their games. Don't let them pull you into it, Mission Gathering. Refuse it. Refuse to meet them on their own terms because we have our Jesus who gave us the terms to meet them on. May you break their stranglehold over us 
as Christ broke that stranglehold they had over the world, even to the point of conquering death itself. So may you be the true you. May you be that child of God, that peacemaker, that one who is blessed in their grief. May you be that one today, here and now, in the ever-present moment of God's blessing and healing and God's continued engagement in this world. May it be so. So before we go into communion, I wanted to do a spiritual exercise with everyone. One of the toughest things about next week is going to be the anxiety of unknowing. Not knowing who's won an election, not knowing whoever wins the election, what the results of that will be in our streets and in our communities and in our families. Our rule of life calls us to be engaged in the healing of the world. But sometimes in order to engage, we have to do some work inside of ourselves. You feel me? So today I wanted to practice together one of the most essential spiritual practices in our Rule of Life workbook. Now, if you've downloaded it, you can find it under the Engage section, and this is something you can use throughout the week. But this exercise is called the Simple Prayer. So if you have something to write on, that'd be awesome. If you don't, that's okay. This is just practicing, right? So you start off by writing down something that makes you feel anxious to the point that you can't really think straight. You know that thing that keeps you up at night or the thing that just seems to be coloring and shading all the different stuff throughout your week? So for this week, for our practice as our practice together, let's, let's go with the election, right? I mean, we're all feeling some anxiety over that. Now, think about the election. Think about all of that stuff. Now think about where that anxiety is stored in your body, right? Where do you feel that ache or that pain or that place that hurts because of this anxiety? Where does your body keep the score of all of those worries over the results coming in over the next few weeks, over family members that are angry one way or the other, now, pause that. Think of somewhere in your body that feels the opposite of anxiety. A place where you can just relax when you go into that moment of just chill, almost like zen-like state. Where is that in your body? Okay, so now, you got those two things. Let's close our eyes. Imagine eyes closed, imagine God taking control of the situation. God is coming in and being tangibly present with you in a sacred space. God is inviting you to form this space with God. Feel the warmth of God's presence. Feel your body begin to relax from the top of your head shoulders, down your arms, into your fingertips, and all the way down to your toes. Now ask God in this moment to show you where to release these anxieties and these worries in this place that you're building together. What does this place look like? Is it in the open? Is it a room? Think about where you're at in this moment with God. What is it you're feeling in that place? Is there a sound that sticks out to you? Is there a smell or fragrance in that space that comes into your mind? Use all of your senses to engage this space. Allow the Holy Spirit to help you create a fully immersive picture of that space. Remember to breathe in, breathe out, keep breathing. Allow your mind to transport you there more and more. Keeping notes in your mind of what you feel in this space. 
where do you feel in your body that this space is allowing you to release those anxieties? Take in every image that you see, every sound that you hear, every sensation that you feel. Create this space. This is you and God making a space together. Sit in it for a moment. Now slowly coming back. sharing together in this moment of time and space as you leave behind the space that you and God have created together ask God if there's anything else you need to be shown anything else you need to hear right now slowly pulling back something to write down notes on write down all of the ways your five senses were engaged write down the things that you saw and heard and smelled and tasted and touched and as we leave this time of spiritual practice together know that this is something that you can do throughout your week Let's leave this moment by giving a prayer of thanksgiving to God. God, we thank you that you are present with us in every moment. Allow us to take time to move into our special space with you when anxiety feels like it's too much. Give us awareness of when our body is trying to tell us it's storing that anxiety somewhere. Give us the ability to look at you with the incredible thankfulness for this gift of life. Help us to live it wholly and fully in you. In Jesus' name, amen. On the day that we remember all of the souls who have gone before us, as we work towards securing a brighter future for all those souls yet to join us in this world, we come to the table of the Lord and remember, knowing that we are just like all of those who gathered there with him on that night so long ago. We are faithful friends and family that would not leave his side. We are those who would abandon him, and we are those who would betray him. But we remember that even those who would bring about their own destruction, work against their own self-interests are still offered a seat at Christ's table. We remember that our guilt and our shame is not the currency of this meal, but it's in the memory. The memory of the bread that he broke, saying, this is my body broken for you. And in the memory of the cup that he held up, saying, this is my love, my blood poured out for the world. We find, we find that this cup quenches the thirst that our guilt and shame has created within us, and that this bread helps us to feel fulfilled and a part of God's holy family. So taking what you have and dipping it into the cup, this is the body broken and the love poured out for you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Go now into the world and be blessed. Remember that God is with you in all things, engaging alongside you in this world. Remember that you are not alone in your worries or anxieties or fears. Take comfort that you are part of something bigger than this moment. 
You are surrounded by the souls of our ancestors, that great cloud of witnesses that came before, who struggled and engaged the world just as you are called to struggle and engage it. So go forth in the same boldness that they had in them to change this world. Go live a whole life filled with the reassurances that God loves you and that you are God's child. He will never forsake you. Jesus will never forsake you. And our God promises that all those who cry tears, their tears shall be dried. So go now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the grace, love, and fierce protection of God the Mother was all. Happy All Saints Day Mission Gathering. And please, if you haven't yet, go and vote for the common good of the most marginalized among us. Go forth and do your duty to do good for the least of these. And I'll see you next time.